Okay, this is Helicopter Man Pounds Dinosaur Billionaire Ass, a, uh, a novel by Chuck Tingle himself, narrated uh, by me, Sebastian. Uh, let's get straight into it. Chapter 1. My name is John Hams. My name is John Hams, and I'm a sex addict, I say a mantra that I know like the back of my hand by now. I look down at the literal back of my hand for a moment and study myself. Sometimes I feel like a stranger in my own skin, and tonight is one of those nights. How the hell did I even end up here? Hey, hey John. John! The crowd responds with a resounding chorus of support. I've been coming to these meetings for a long time, and this part is still difficult. Once I start talking, the words will just flow out of my brain and into the air like the beautiful confessional butterfly. But for the first few seconds of silence between my greeting and their response, it feels like I'm sitting atop a giant roller coaster, just waiting for the plunge. The butterflies remain firmly planted within the pit of my stomach. The hair on the back of my neck stands straight up as I desperately try to will myself into speaking. Finally, my lips part and my story comes tumbling out. It's been two years since my last sexual encounter with a billionaire dinosaur, I tell the group. A ragtag bunch of fellow addicts sitting around in the loose formation of a circle were in the dimly lit corner of a church basement at the far end of Hollywood Boulevard, past the glitz and the glamour, where the liquor stores start to pop up and the gleeful tourists fade away. The only ones left to wander around over here are down and out actors and failed screenwriters angst-filled shells of their former selves, who swear up and down that they could have been the one if they'd only landed that role. Maybe next time, they think. The group responds to my admission with a smatter of supportive congratulations. I nod in appreciation, accepting one of the few things in my life right now that I can truly be proud of, my abstinence. Honestly, I don't really think about billionaire dinosaur sex all that much anymore. I tell the group. It's gotten to the point where it just doesn't seem to cross my mind, and I'm working all the time, so that makes things a little easier. I laugh. <laughs> work is a fucking pain in these days. What's hard about work? Our group leader, Forbach, asks. Forbach is a handsome older man who was once a porn star in the golden age of VHS tapes and late night adult channel skin flicks. You can still see it in the way that he carries himself with the confidence and knowledge that, at one point, he could have any man, woman, or prehistoric beast that he wanted, just by flashing a smile and giving a sly little wink. Apparently, the industry wasn't all that too good to Forbach in his later years, because he ended up here with the rest of us, having abstained from his own billionaire dinosaur vice for nearly a decade. Forbach says that he's saving himself until he finds the one, you know, a perfect, wealthy Tyrannosaurus Rex who can somehow undo all the trauma and anxiety that has mummified his sex life. But I have my doubts. Straight up, I don't think Forbach ever wants to see another prehistoric penis again. <laughs> Work is... I trail off. Work... I mean, nobody really likes to work, do they? Some of us do, Forbach tells me. This is what I do for work, and I love it. True, I say nodding. But you of all people know what it's like to take it up the ass for a paycheck. <laughs> a heavy and achingly awkward silence falls over the room. The second that the words lift my mouth, I had regretted them. I wasn't trying to be mean in any way, not at all. But there is a certain sting to my joke that I can't help but notice now that it's all too late. Full disclosure, in some ways I'm a little jealous of Forbach. We're both brothers in Jurassic Billionaire Abstinence, but every day I'm growing more and more convinced that I don't really have a choice in the matter. Even if I wanted a hot raptor in my life, I'm not sure that I could find the one. Forbach, on the other hand, is still a stunner, and in his mid-forties, He's almost twice my age. <laughs> now don't get me wrong, I'm not terrible looking by any stretch. But there are certainly no delusions of a male modeling career in my future. Average weight, and a little on the short side, with mousy brown hair, and a face that I'm not entirely happy with. I'm just another face in the crowd, 
and I've come to terms with that. Forbach, on the other hand, could still probably steal the brontosaurus boyfriend off any hot little twink that strutted his way in here if he really wanted to. Luckily, the guy knows a thing or two about restraint, and he's got a good sense of humor. You're right about that, Forbach finally says, laughing at my joke and signaling to the rest of the group that it's okay to join in at his expense. God damn, I love this guy. So solid in his own self-worth. In the entire time that I've been coming to this Hollywood meeting, I've never seen him lose his cool. I don't know what it is that makes work so awful these days, I blurt, collecting my thoughts again and trying to focus. It kind of sucks to that the raptors of the lab seem as such a prude, I guess. I glance around the circle of fellow billionaire dinosaur sex addicts, looking for any kind of response, but only met with their steady gazes. One of the two men nod an understanding, which is all the encouragement that I need. They know I'm not seeing anyone, but they've all tried to hook up with me, and I've stayed strong. Now that the option isn't there any longer, it's like I'm invisible. Meanwhile, there's this new guy, Donald, uh, who I know is just already fucking his way to the top. He's been to the lab a quarter of the time that I've been there, and already received two promotions. One more, and he's technically gonna be my boss. A stegosaurus sitting directly across from me in the circle raises his hand, and I nod in his direction. I've never seen him before, but the second that our eyes meet I can feel something strange blossom inside me. A tiny pinprick of my heart that floods out across my veins like a warm, pleasant egg. This is why we shouldn't have interspecies sexaholic meanings, I think to myself. Apparently, in the officially sanctioned groups, they split things up between humans, dinosaurs, unicorns, and big feet as a steadfast and unbreakable rule. But our wild bunch is technically not an official chapter of Sexaholics Anonymous, just Forbach's personal bit of community service. He uses a lot of the same methods of the big meeting groups, to the point where many of our members are supplementing their official meetings by coming here on the side. But we're still not the real deal. Besides, even if this guy's a handsome dinosaur, it doesn't automatically mean that he's a handsome billionaire dinosaur. That's a stereotype I've made leaps and bound towards eliminating from my brain. We've all had types of creatures come and go from these meetings, and it's never been a problem. At least, not yet. I'm sorry. I think I must have missed it. Where do you work? The Stegosaurus asks with genuine curiosity. Most people say office. You say lab. Forbach immediately steps in. Actually, uh, John Hems has a government job that's uh, very, very strict about its secrecy. Like, we're all uh, like being open here, but like, as we've covered before, this is something we're not going to talk about. The dinosaur lowers his beautiful blue eyes, looking somewhat ashamed of myself. It, it's okay, I tell him. I, I just can't really talk about it, you know? There's a strange silence as the entire room looks inward, everyone running wild with their own personal suspicions of what I could possibly be doing out at Butt Corp Laboratories. Eventually, Forbot claps his hands together in an attempt to get things moving again. Well then, uh, anything else you'd like to talk about tonight? He asks me. I shake my head. Nah, that's about it. Well, thanks for sharing. Forbach says, which is everyone else's cue to burst into solid applause. Peter, uh, you're up next. Peter. The older man sitting next to me starts to speak loudly about his craving for gay jet planes, but I tune him out, instead focusing on the handsome dinosaur newcomer directly across the way. There's something utterly intoxicating about the guy's presence. A strange mixture of confidence and intelligence that I can't quite put my finger on. He's laid back and unassuming, as if he doesn't need to be the loudest, biggest reptile in the room, simply because he already knows that he is. Basically, he seems like the opposite of every dinosaur that I've ever gone for. Cool and controlled. After the meeting's finished, I head over to the snack table and start filling up on chips and dip. I've been so unhappy at work lately that I've started avoiding going home following functions like this, because I know that the next step is sleep, and then comes the morning, a 
and another long work day at the lab. Oh, the life of a single, celibate man. I make my way down the table, picking up some hummus and pita, followed by a few baby carrots, and then a chocolate chip cookie. Hello, comes a warm voice from behind me. I spin around abruptly and come face to face with the handsome Stegosaurus newcomer. I'm Yorb Kilcorn, he says, extending his hand. I, I just wanted to apologize for earlier. I didn't know that questions about your job were off limits. I was just trying to be proactive. I'm new here. John Hams, I tell him, reaching out and giving Yorb a friendly handshake. Now that I'm this close to him, I can finally discern just how handsome this creature actually is. Yorb is perfectly chiseled in every way from his jawline down to the hint of scaly muscular chest that peeks out from the edge of his heather gray v-neck. The spines that line their way across his back are, frankly, breathtaking. I can feel a slight throbbing ache deep within my loins, a place that literally hasn't been touched in years. I already know that talking to this guy is probably a bad idea. After all, what better way to relapse than with a fellow addict? but I can't help being slowly charmed by his quietly confident demeanor. Thank God he's not a billionaire. Then again, what's with a little harmless flirting? <laughs> yeah, Forbuck was a little harsh on you about that, I tell Yor, glancing over at the man in question as he holds the door for a few exiting members with a smile and a nod. He means well, though. Yeah, Yorb agrees. I can see that. He seems really great. I think I could get a lot out of this place. I eye him curiously. There's more to the Stegosaurus than meets the eye, that's for sure. You didn't share today, I tell him, as if he hadn't noticed. Nah, not yet, Yorb explains. Didn't seem like the right time, first meeting and all. I shrug. Whatever. It takes some people months of listening before they open up. The two of us stand here for a moment, and I'm not exactly sure what to see next. Yorb doesn't seem to mind, though. Perfectly comfortable with the silence. Do you want to go grab something to eat? Yorb finally asks. I want to so badly say yes, but the second his words hit my ears, alarm bells start ringing deep within my brain. I can't even remember the last time I was asked out by a dinosaur that was this handsome, rich or poor. By all accounts, Yorb seemed like the full package that any reasonable man would be swooning after. I start to open my mouth and then hesitate, catching the words in my throat. I quickly change course. I... I don't think that's a good idea, I tell him. I fully expect Yor to be devastated by the news, but instead he smiles warmly. No worries. His confidence unwavering, Yorb turns his attention back to the table of food, where he grabs a slice of ham and then takes a bite. He chews slowly and then swallows, then quickly washes it down with a shot of chocolate milk. I'm... I'm sorry, I say, immediately regretting my decision to turn him down, and his lack of disappointment only making things even worse for me. Yorp shrugs. You seem like a very nice guy, but honestly, I, I, I get it. This... this is the last place I should be trying to get a date. I don't say anything because he's right, but I don't care. I want nothing more than for the two of us to get out of here and grab a drink talk to each other like neither of us are the damaged addicts we are. I miss the mystery and suspense of being around a secure, sexy dinosaur. Well, it was nice to meet you, John Hams, Yorp says, giving me a little wink. I'll see you at the next meeting. With that, Yorp turns and heads towards the door, leaving me in the state of speechless yearning. I watch as he exchanges a few words with Forbach and then departs into the warm Hollywood night, flipping a small silver coin into the air and then catching it again with his hand. It's one thing to refrain from billionaire dinosaur sex, but did I really have to deny every creature connection that comes my way? I let out a long sigh and gather my things, heading home alone once again.